Welcome back to Newsmaker Live with me, your host, Laura Chapier. My guest this evening is a very special one to me. He has, he's very popular and he's well known in many, many, many circles. But just permit me to give him an introduction, I think, that is fitting to him. And I'm taking this from an organization that he belongs to. Father Clovis is my guest this evening. He's a priest of the Archdiocese of Castri, St. Lucia in the West Indies. He's one of our own. He studied for the priesthood at the Angelicum in Rome and was ordained in 1983 by blessed Pope John Paul Saint. II. Saint Pope John Paul II. Father Clovis is a qualified teacher and holds a doctorate in mathematics and degrees in theology, canon law, and Latin literature. He has served as Dean of the Arts, Science and General Studies Faculty of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. And for seven years, he served as the principal of the St. Mary's College. He is the Archdiocesan Spiritual Director of the Legion of Mary in St. Lucia, though he through which he, he promotes devotion of our, to Our Lady, especially that of the Rosary, the Perpetual Help Novena, and the First Friday and First Saturday devotions. Additionally, he has led outreaches to the neighboring islands and annual pilgrimages to Marian shrines in over 14 different countries. He is also the spiritual director of the Population Research Institute and Family Life International and a versatile speaker on pro-life issues, scripture, Mariology, and on Catholic teaching in general. Not only has he many talks and homilies on CD to his credit, but he has made literary contributions to newspapers and international magazines and has published a book entitled A Biblical Search for the Church Christ Founded. He is currently the director of the Secretariat for Family and Life in the Archdiocese of Castries, which works towards re-establishing family and family life on solid Christian principles in St. Lucia. In 2003, Father Clovis was one of those who led the resistance to the St. Lucia government's sur surreptitious legalization of abortion in, in St. Lucia and even refused Holy Communion to the head of state for having signed abortion into law. Father Clovis is the eldest of five brothers who are all active in the pro-life apostolate. My guest this evening, Father Linus Clovis, and our, title, our, our show this evening is The Pursuit of Happiness. When is enough enough? Welcome, Father Clovis. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I, I look forward to giving this, this um, introduction all day. <laughs> all day. And I just, oh, I, well, I, I messed it up a little bit. I wanted to have people guessing, but I was so excited to introduce you. I gave it up, out in the, first, in the first line. Welcome, Father Clovis. <laughs> Thank you very much. And how It's great, great to be here. Wonderful. Father Clovis, what do you think of the last item in the trending in the news with the horse whisperer? I think it's sad. It's a sad reality. Um, and I'm afraid it's only a sign of and a symptom of the age in which we live because um, things are going to get much worse than this. It's going to become more and more commonplace and the sexual aberrations, that's what we're talking about, will get more bizarre. You know? And sadly, our young people are the ones who are going to be affected you know, because they will they will treat it as normal, you know, who am I to judge? <laughs> well, I mean, last week we heard about this, this legalization of same-sex marriage yes. in the United States of America. Yes. And um, that has been, uh, you know, uh, we've heard a lot about that. The funny thing, though, is that we really haven't heard much about the gay rights people in St. Lucia. But I, I assume that's just a matter of time before that takes a hold, I guess. But well, what do you think about that? About what happened to the yeah. Supreme Court? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's a, a certain a sign that, the, the, that we, the Western um, civilization anyway, or what remains of it, 
has re totally rejected God and that they, they have literally said to God that you have no say in what we do anymore. And I am, um, sadly, we here in the Caribbean are going to be sucked into this. You think so? I, th I think so, yes, ab absolutely. Um, just um, two years ago, um, Dr. Edward Green, who is the special envoy for the Secretary General of the United Nations, made a tour of the region. He came to St. Lucia. And um, he made some incredible statements, such as um, the, 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 re the region is homophobic, and that, that alone, that's a, we can have a whole program on that um, word, homophobic. And, but but the 20 percent of the region was homosexual, and that no government would tackle it, would try to, to decriminalize this, um, sodomy, because there would be repercussions from the uh, our electorate. And so the best thing to do was to bring it in through CARICOM. He said so very, very um, clearly. I actually challenged him. He said so. It was written, in, I think it was written in the Star and in the Voice. I challenged him and I said, I defy, I, I wrote, I literally put, I defy you to produce just one study to show 20% of the. Region. Is it that much though in the Of Caribbean? course not. No, of course not. In any society in the U.S., it's, it's less than 2%. Well, know, that's Holland. what I thought. And I thought right. it was an extraordinarily but, but, high yeah, number. But last year, we, I met him at a conference here in St. Lucia. And he, he, I happened to be making a presentation. And he was sitting at the head table. And I said so. I mentioned him by name. And I said that he had said 20%. And um, I said, I repeat my challenge. I defy you to produce. You know, He met me later in the bathroom. And said, um, you know, Father Clovis, you know, you're right. It's it's, uh, it's it's about two percent. Now, I would have expected, as a scholar, as an academic, as a, an honest man, you'd correct um, the error. But he did not. He made no attempt to correct it. You know. Um, so we did you call him out on that, though? No. I well, I did on, on the floor. Mm -hmm. But we, but after he told me mm -hmm. so. I expected him to do so mm -hmm. because I, I certainly, would. if I make a mistake, and I would admit, yes, I made a mistake, you know, but he didn't, which leads me to doubt his sincerity and um, his objectivity. Um, and of course, it, it goes with, with, with the rest of the program. So I, 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 I am sh certain that pressure will be put on the region to adopt the same kind of stance the, the Americans have. But no. this, the region, just without, you know, before you continue, the region is mostly Christian. Yes. Re regardless of denomination, whether it's Catholicism or Protestant or right. whatever. Yes. Do you think that we, the people, being predominantly Christians, would allow our leaders to go down, down that route because this is affecting us. Certainly. And, and, and I, I would think that it's not in keeping with our faith and our beliefs. I agree. The fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. That includes the unborn. It was legalized. And how many voices were raised in protest? Wow. <laughs> so I'm afraid I, I'm, I am afraid to say that I think we are going to be overwhelmed by, by the, the um, gay marriage. Is it because we're a, a, ma a passive a passive people? I mean, but you would have expected well, that if government um, being all powerful as it is, they're making a decision such as this for, for us and that goes contrary to what we believe in, then the next powerful um, Institutes should be, should be the church. The church. I agree. I and agree so entirely. why isn't the church not making much more of a bigger fuss? Because I think, well, we haven't heard from you, because, but we know that you've been out. I've been out, yes. But we haven't really heard from the church. We've heard from one pastor, I believe, from one denomination. But we really haven't heard from the Catholic church, which is, and if correct me if I'm wrong, but Catholicism is still about 65%. So we still, it's, Catholicism is still the majority um, denomination, denomination and, in St. Lucia. So why have we not heard more from the Catholic Church? Why is the Catholic Church not spearheading that movement to, to say no when it comes to issues that go against what we believe as a Christian nation? That is a hard question that you ask. Why 
isn't. The, ch well, the church has spoken clearly. The, the question is, why don't we hear that the voice of the church being echoed in St. Lucia? And uh, sadly, very few of the, my, my brother priests are willing to speak publicly. Why, I do not know. I, I'm, a, I'm not in a position to, to say. What I do know is that on Judgment Day, we will be asked the question, you know, so as shepherds. We will be asked the question, so, but is it enough for us to wait for judgment? I mean, I certainly don't want to wait for judgment then to be told, no, purgatory or hell or whatever. I, I want to get a street pass. Like, I want to do my little part. Okay. But we look, if just as government, as, as citizens of this country, we look to government to lead us and to guide us and to take our country in the right path. We look to our spiritual leaders. Yes. In, um, from my experience at the, at the, in, in the abortion, um, I, I, I spoke out because I, I, I value human life. Mm -hmm. And certainly I saw what would happen as a consequence. You know, we're already concerned about depopulation in St. Lucia. We have schools that are not filled. Um, well, I'm not surprised because, in fact, I said so at the time, 10, 11 years ago. Um, but among, among the clergy, I had six there were six priests who said to me we support you but we will not say anything and i, I can i can understand that because to stand out on on your own it requires a, a great deal of courage and i but, myself was afraid but if you're one and there's six that makes seven they're not on their own well they w I, I mean I, I can't break the confidence of well of course but, I, but, I can understand but um, one pre other priest did in fact come mm -hmm. out and that was Father St. Rose he mm -hmm. stood by me and he received a very s severe bashing because of it I myself received my bashing privately um, I was castigated um, within the circle um, and I mean I, I can say so the Archbishop you know he wanted to know by what right um, I did this and as I said well you ordained me a, a priest and you gave me the Bible you said you know believe what you read pre preach what you believe practice what you preach I said well I read it and he says thou shalt not kill and therefore I'm preaching this and so on um, and, and, and I mean I, I paid the price but I mean that's okay I have no problem with paying the price for what I believe um, after all you know, Jesus himself paid the ultimate the price. price for us yes and I think in this particular issue with this, the same sex, the fact that there's silence tells me that we are not going to hear the church speak. And it might very well be that we have shepherds who are sheep in sheep's clothing. So are we going to see you do the same thing that you did with the abortion? Um, situation and are you going to continue if to speak out? I, I will speak out on what I believe to be right and what I believe to be good for people. I, I am concerned about the salvation of souls. Mm -hmm. Sin will lead us to hell individually and collectively and if nobody will, if those who are supposed to speak do not speak, I certainly am supposed to speak. I know that. I, I, when I was ordained a priest and I didn't go into the priesthood um, with, um, um, with my eyes closed. I, I was very aware. In fact, after I was ordained a deacon, I, I had a, a certain, um, I wouldn't call it a revelation, but a sense of what was ahead, what lay ahead for me. And I actually went back. I left St. Lucia, one, with the intention of never returning here, and secondly, to, to just forget about the priesthood. That was my intention. Why? Um, because I had, when I was ordained, I had a, a terrible experience. Um, a, a, a sort of, it was like a panoramic, panoramic vision of what I was going to go through, and m most of what which, which happened, you know, the isolation and, and and so on. And I left with that intention, and uh, for four months I struggled with it. And then one day it just cleared, and I thought, well, the Lord is called. Uh, mm. Here I am. Mm -hmm. And so. But going back to the abortion, mm -hmm. I mean, do you liken? Um, the whole homosexuality thing, a movement or lifestyle or culture, however you want to term it, um, to the same thing because, you, I mean, with abortion, you, you, you killing off a population that we desperately need because for a number of reasons. Economically, we need, we need to have fresh life, yes. right? Because we have an aging population. Our younger people are unemployed. We have a 50% um, 
unemployment rate. Now, some people will say, well, if you have more babies, you're going to increase the, the, that. But at the end of the day, the older persons, when they've hit 67, 70, they go into retirement. And those coming up, what's going to happen with regard to their pensions? Bec because there'll be no renewal. Yes. So economically, but, yes. we have yeah. that. But, but I mean, the, the, that problem is really one of organization. Huh? Mm -hmm. Because Singapore is the same size as St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. They have a population of three, nearly 4 million. Mm -hmm. But they are very organized. Our, our problem is that we are indisciplined. You know, we don't take life seriously. We're very casual about everything. And so we don't achieve what we could achieve. But I do see the problem uh, uh, in, in, in similar terms, that w the, the pattern of the abortion issue will be f was now going to be followed by the same sex. The, you see, the, what has happened is we have lost the meaning of marriage and the Supreme Court's decision has made it even worse. In fact, it has abolished marriage because marriage is concerned about children. The whole purpose of getting married is to have children. So, if what if I get married and I don't want to have kids? Then you are going against God's plan, which who's who's in in Genesis when he he had uh, the Adam Eve he brought it um, Eve he said you know a uh, man will leave father mother joint his wife to become one flesh and then he said increase multiply fill the earth. Um, as Catholics, if you go, if you do not intend to have children, you, your marriage will be invalid. It can be annulled. Okay. The first, the first thing is that there has to be complementarity, a man and a woman. That is because they have to be open to life to have children. Secondly, they have to promise fidelity. Okay, that they will exclude all others. They, it has to be lifelong. Okay, till death is to part, and lastly, they must be willing to accept children. Now, it's an openness to life, willing to accept children. If you go into marriage um, without the intention of being faithful, the marriage is val invalid. It's null. It just doesn't exist. If you go in with the intention of divorce or separation or whatever, it's null. It's not a marriage. If you go in excluding children, it's not a marriage. Okay. It's now, a union of sorts, a partnership. It's a union. It's say? a partnership, a union, whatever you want to call it, but it's not a marriage. And it's in fact on those grounds that marriages can be annulled. Now, in the case of um, same sex, two men or uh, two women, complementarity is missing. They cannot produce children. Adoption is not, it does not, is not their children, it's not their child. It's, it's, a, it's a legal fiction. Okay. Uh, interestingly, fidelity is not um, a, a common attribute of s homosexuality. In fact, promiscuity is the norm. But there's those no. who would argue that and say that there are there are gay couples who have been together for longer than heterosexual no. couples. Yes, but they have not been faithful. And how we would know that because oh yeah, the statistics that there are studies which show that. In fact, um, they're um, even they're more pr promiscuous hmm. than heterosexual. Yeah. 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 Homosexuality is a more promiscuous lifestyle than heterosexuality. Um, de depending on which studies you read, the average homosexual can have t three, four hundred partners in a year. That's extreme, isn't it? Mm, it is. But, but, but would we're you talking not about averages. Yeah, but would you not say that that is not necessarily the norm that there are people and because there are people who engage in that life it brings up the average as opposed to those persons who don't um, i mean i i know people who have told you i i mean i know i can count on one hand uh, 20 mid 20 guys you know in the mid 20s who have had an inordinate amount of of sexual partners in their short lives mm -hmm. they're heterosexual yeah, but hom red heterosexual, there's, there's a difference. In, 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 you, first of all, you have to understand, if you look at male sexuality as opposed to female sexuality, um, it, male sexuality is immediate. The, the satisfaction is, is instant sort of thing. And so it's easy to go from one man to another. Mm -hmm. In the case of a woman, it's, it's low, so there has to be a little courting, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that takes up time. Yeah, but then they know. would have different women for... <laughs> You know, it's not a courting. You see, define courting. 
Okay. A court is, 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 is where you try, in fact, what it should be or what it is. What, what, it, what it should be. You're basically you're trying to get to know the person. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in our age, it's trying to get the person into bed. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that's a problem. That's why there's so many, um, so many sexual problems and so many social problems. Because it, it's all a matter of sexuality mm -hmm. and not really a matter of knowing to get to know the person, to love the person for that person's sake. Now, if we come back to, to, to marriage, what I was saying, in, in, in um, the same-sex um, marriage, you don't have complementarity. You don't have openness to life, you know. Um, the fidelity, well, as, as I said, they, th that's a difficult one to, to have. Certainly for the first, again, I'm talking about statistics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, statistically, perhaps the first year, and then after that, they, they invariably have other partners and they end up having open relationships um, in in the up in every in every single society and culture that their marriage has always been regarded as the norm because in fact 90 percent 98 percent of the population is is uh, heterosexual you know um, so the vast majority what's happened now we have this two percent to wagon the, the dog mm -hmm. you know um, and in and in, in making the, the, the state the judgment that it did, the Supreme Court has effectively said that marriage is no longer about children. It's about adults, the happiness of adults, and not really the happiness of children. Hence our, and our title, so yeah, The Pursuit of know, Happiness. Yeah. Doesn't everybody deserve to be happy, though? Yes, so we all want to be happy. But the question is, what is happiness? We, we have lost the meaning of happiness. Happiness is mixed up with pleasure. Nowadays, when you talk about being happy, we're thinking of pleasure. So whether it be f food or alcohol you know, or drugs or, or sexuality, we think that this is going to make me happy. But we all know that dr overeating, getting drunk, uh, you know, um, inordinate or displaced sex, um, drugs, does not make us happy afterwards. And so at the time, we have a great deal of pleasure, yes. But we feel the consequences after. Happiness, in fact, belongs to the spirit, and it can it consists in doing in the person doing what he or she knows to be right, even though it's difficult at the time, even though it's painful at the time. But having the satisfaction afterwards of saying yes, what I did was the right thing, and I am at peace with myself. So peace is another word for happiness. And our Lord Himself tells us that blessed are the poor in spirit. The world says no. The rich are the ones who are blessed, who are happy. Mm -hmm. The world says happy are the, 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 the meek. The world says no, there's those that they get revenge. You know? Happy are the merciful, no, get, you know, and, and so on. So the, the scriptures tell us that, that, that happiness or blessedness consists in, in an attitude, a disposition towards life. First of all, um, a rightness with God or a, 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 a good conscience knowing that I've done the right thing, even though it's difficult, even though it's painful, even though I have been disadvantaged because of it. Um, and unfortunately, we, we are not training our children to appreciate that. I, I was very fortunate, myself and my brothers, and our father you know, gave us uh, a, a very disciplined um, upbringing. You know? I, I mean, when I was growing up, I didn't like it, neither did my brothers, but I, uh, I appreciate it, and we deeply indebted to him for it. Um, the, the, what, what is interesting, though, when uh, that growing up, there, w there were rules, and we, d we didn't break the rules, um, at least not openly. Um, and, but we, we knew there would be consequences, and so... We, we were always conscious that we had to live up to the expectations of our parents. So yeah. are we saying, are you saying though that therefore that homosexuality is not necessarily of n nature, but... No, no, it's not, it's not uh, of nature in, in the sense that um, it's the norm. Bec because the whole purpose of sexuality is procreation. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Right through... Um, nature, all animals. If, if, if animals, um, th in fact, the only times animals copulate is when they are in heat. Mm -hmm. you know? I think and we're one of the only ones who do it. Yeah, Beca that's, and that's because we have um, uh, a, a, a rational 
our mind, that we were able to reason, and we have control over, well, to some degree. But, but one would think that because we had a rational mind, that we would know, okay, when not to and when to. But we do. That's the whole point. We do know when not to and not to. It's just, it's just our s we permit our, se our senses, uh, our desires to, mm -hmm. to take over. Mm -hmm. You know? We, we do not know when to stop. So are you saying, therefore, that homosexuals can choose not to be? They, I don't. I wouldn't say they can choose not to be. Um, I, I, th what it's, it, homosexuality is a very heavy cross, and all of us, every single human being, has some cross to carry. There's some difficulty in their life. It may be psychological, it may be physical, it may be emotional, or whatever. Um, there's some people who suffer a great deal of pain constantly, all the time, every day, you know, day after day. Um, and and they, they 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 think well what's the point in this what's this this suffering makes no sense, and so we thinking well, useless suffering, kill the person. You know, does that mean that's not a thing? That's the end of it. But Christ suffered to teach us that there is value in suffering, even what we'd call pointless suffering. We don't see it, but God sees it, and so we he he, he suffered so that we can join our sufferings with his. Now, homosexuality itself is, is a heavy cross, a very heavy cross. It's a very lonely life. Um, it's it's uh, 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 um, a life that, um, that that's closed in on itself. And so there's a, a sort of a rebellion against it. It's not a it's not a, a a cross that people that I don't think people went looking for. Things happen to to young boys or young girls um, that they have no control over, and suddenly they find themselves involved in in, in this in this lifestyle. Um, what we have to do, I mean, I'm talking about the society and, and the church. What we have to do is to offer understanding, a helping hand, to, and to to recognize their their situation as as uh, um, a cross that, that we help them to carry. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of judging and condemning and saying, oh, you're, you're a sinner. All of us are sinners. You know, the kleptomaniac, the, man who, the person who steals, the person who embezzles, the person who interferes in people's bank accounts, you know, the, the, uh, the, the mechanic who doesn't do the job properly. You know, all of these, these are sins, you know. And, but but when, when we talk about sexual sins, it, it becomes more personal. Um, but there, there are those who would say that the reason why the church is not more vocal on that topic is because in the past the church has been racked with scandal yep. after yep. scandal yes. where that is concerned. Yep. It, that also is, is perhaps one of the reasons that there's silence. But then uh, hom the, the church has been infiltrated um, by homosexuals. Mm -hmm. um, it's a safe haven, at least it was, a safe haven for them. Um, they, they, they're in an environment that is comfortable. They, they're men all around. They um, have an excuse for not being married, um, you know. And, in, and they, they have a lot of, they have what homosexuals have and need, money. Um, bec because, uh, give, give you a case in point, um, the, uh, the, the gay lobby is one of the richest lobbies in the world mm -hmm. you know, and they they have a lot of political clout they have a lot of economic clout and they are able to inf influence the media and and the uh, and the um, Hollywood so they get their message across very easily um, and so the, the church was one was one of the targets and it and uh, the scandals that resulted um, have in fact crippled us and um, you know it, perhaps that has contributed to the silence in that, that we hear. But I don't see why we should be silenced. Because when, when I said the church has been infiltrated, it's not just the Catholic Church. All religions, no, I'm all, about church yeah, too. all religions, in fact, have been. What's interesting is the media has focused on the Catholic Church mm -hmm. because um, we have always, the, 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 certainly the popes, um, John Paul, well, yeah, John Paul II. Um, Benedict have spoken very, very clearly on, on these issues. But then, speaking of the popes, mm. I'm glad you brought up the popes. Our current pope has have made some statements that are not necessarily one that you would hear or you expect from the Catholic Church. How do you feel about <laughs> those statements? 
I find them very disturbing um, b because it, 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 it swings the church in, in, t in a direction that w I'm not sure where we are going. Um, and it, there almost seems to be uh, an, a, a, an opening to contradict our doctrine. So I find that I find a little disturbing. We have to get to a break. Mm -hmm. When we come back, more on the pursuit of happi happiness.